Welcome to the Queen of Swords, the podcast where we take on relationship drama like a boss. Are you tired of being ghosted, breadcrumbed, or just plain confused? Well, grab a glass of wine, put on your favorite sweatpants, and join me, the one and only Queen of Swords, as I take you on a journey through the ups and downs of modern dating and relationships. With some relatable anecdotes and a little bit of tough love, I'm going to help you navigate the tricky waters of love, lust, and everything in between. So whether you're single, in a relationship, or it's complicated, join us every other week as we laugh, cry, and learn to slay the dating game like the queens that we are. Let's get started. Welcome everyone. We're here to talk about all things love, relationships, and communication. Let's face it, nothing kills a romance faster than bad communication skills. As the great philosopher George Bernard Shaw once said, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. But seriously, folks, do you know that studies show couples who communicate effectively are 30% more likely to have a happy relationship? That's right, forget diamonds. Communication is a girl and a guy's best friend. So if you're tired of having the same argument with your partner over and over again, or if you just want to spice up your love life with some new communication techniques, stick around because we've got some tips and tricks that will make you and your partner feel like the king and queen of communication. Let's go. Hey there, lovebirds. It's time for our first segment where we're going to talk about the definition of communication and why it's so important in relationships. So let's start with the definition. Communication is the exchange of information, thoughts, and feelings between two or more people. Sounds pretty simple, right? Well, if you've ever been in a relationship, then you know it's anything but simple. You see, communication is the foundation of any healthy relationship. It's what allows you and your partner to connect, understand each other's needs, and work together as a team. Without proper communication, your relationship is like a car without a steering wheel. It's going to crash and burn. Now, let me give you an example. Have you ever tried to talk to your partner about something important, but they just didn't seem like they were listening? Maybe they were scrolling through their phone or watching TV while you were pouring your heart out. It's frustrating, right? That's because communication isn't just about talking. It's also about listening. As the great motivational speaker Brian Tracy once said, the greatest gift you can give others is the gift of unconditional love and acceptance. And that starts with communication. When you truly listen to your partner, you're showing them that you care about what they have to say and that you respect their thoughts and feelings. So let's make a pact. Let's commit to being better communicators in our relationships. Let's put down the phone, turn off the TV, and really listen to what our partners have to say. Because when we communicate with love and understanding, we're creating a bond that's unbreakable. So let's talk about the elephant in the room, communication problems. It's like we're speaking the same language, but we're using different dictionaries. One of the most common communication problems is the good old-fashioned interrupter. You know the type. They can't wait for you to finish your sentence before they jump in and add their two cents. It's like playing a game of verbal hot potato, and it's not cute. Another communication problem is the passive-aggressive note writer. You come home and find a sticky note on the fridge that says, don't forget to take out the trash, and you're left wondering if you've just been scolded or if your partner genuinely forgot to tell you. But the biggest communication problem of all is the blame game. It's like we're playing a twisted version of hot potato, but instead of passing around a potato, we're passing around blame. And nobody wants to take responsibility for their actions, so we blame our partners for everything that goes wrong. And the effects of those communication problems? Well, they're not pretty. According to a study by the American Psychological Association, poor communication is one of the top reasons why couples seek therapy. And let's be real, nobody wants to pay for therapy just because they can't communicate properly. So let's try and avoid those communication pitfalls and learn to communicate in a healthy and effective manner. It's time to talk about the importance of active listening and communication. Now I know what you're thinking, oh boy, here we go, another lecture on how to be a good listener. But trust me, this is not another one of those listen with your ears, not with your mouth speeches. Let me give you a real world example. When I was in high school, I was dating this guy who was a notoriously bad listener. We would have these conversations where I would be talking about my day and I could see his eyes just glaze over as he checked out mentally. 
I mean, I could have told him I was being abducted by aliens, and he wouldn't have even noticed. So needless to say, that relationship didn't last long. But here's the thing. Active listening isn't just about being present in the conversation. It's about showing your partner that you value what they're saying. As Ernest Hemingway once said, I like to listen. I've learned a great deal from listening carefully, because most people don't listen. In fact, studies show that active listening can actively increase intimacy and feelings of closeness in relationships. So if you want to show your partner that you care, put down what you're doing, look them in the eye, and really listen to what they have to say. Trust me, it'll be worth it. So before we can talk about how to be a good communicator, we have to talk about the different communication styles, the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. First up, we have the passive communication style. This is when you're afraid to speak up for yourself and you let others walk all over you. It's like being a doormat, but with worse posture. In fact, studies show that people who use this communication style are actually more likely to suffer from anxiety and depression. Next, we have the aggressive communication style. This is when you're like a bull in a china shop, charging through conversations with no regards to anyone else's feelings. It's like playing a game of emotional whack-a-mole. And the worst part, people who use this style are more likely to experience relationship conflicts and even physical health problems. So maybe put that sledgehammer down and try a different approach. Speaking of which, let's move on to the assertive communication style. This is the Goldilocks of communication styles. It's not too passive, it's not too aggressive, but it's just right. It's all about expressing your needs and your feelings in a clear and respectful way without trampling all over other people's boundaries. People who use this style are more likely to have satisfying relationships and experience less stress overall. Last but not least, we have the passive aggressive communication style. This is when you're afraid of comfort, so afraid of confrontation that you resort to sneaky underhanded tactics to get your way. It's like being a ninja, but with fewer cool moves and more passive aggressiveness. And let's be real, this style only leads to more conflict and resentment in the long run. So if you find yourself sending passive-aggressive texts, or even giving the silent treatment, maybe it's time to try a different style. There's no one-size-fits-all approach to communication styles, but if you want to have a healthy and happy relationship, it's important to find a style that works for you and your partner. Maya Angelou once said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Let's get real. We're gonna talk about the different communication styles and how they make or break a relationship. So we talked about the passive communication style. You know, the one where you just nod and smile and pretend everything is fine, even when it's really not. Well, Plato once said, we can easily forgive a child who's afraid of the dark. The real tragedy of life is when men are afraid of the light. In other words, if you're afraid to speak up and share your true thoughts and feelings, then you're living in the dark and your relationship is going to suffer for it. On the flip side, we have the aggressive communication style, the type that's always ready to argue and never willing to listen. According to a recent study, 65% of couples who engage in frequent shouting matches are at a higher risk for divorce. So if you want to keep your relationship strong, put down the boxing gloves and learn how to fight fair. So let's talk about passive aggressive communication style, where you say one thing, but your body language and your tone of voice say something completely different. It's like saying, I'm fine, with a scowl on your face. Trust us, it's not a good look. If you want to make your partner feel loved and respected, then it's time to start saying what you mean and meaning what you say. And last but not least, we have the assertive communication style. This is where you're able to express your thoughts and feelings in a clear and respectful way. Carl Rogers once said, what is most personal is most universal. So if you want to connect with your partner on a deeper level, embrace your assertive side and start communicating like a pro. So how do we develop these assertive communication skills in our romantic relationships? And let me tell you, as someone who is a people pleaser, this one was really hard for me. But the benefits of being assertive are undeniable. For starters, did you know that people who are assertive are generally more satisfied in their relationships? It's true. According to a study published in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships, people who were more assertive in their communication with their partners reported higher levels of relationship satisfaction. Now, I know what you must be thinking, but being assertive means being aggressive, right? Wrong. Being assertive means expressing your needs and feelings in a clear and confident manner, without being aggressive or passive-aggressive. 
One of the best ways to develop more assertive communication skills is to practice using what we call I statements instead of you statements. For example, instead of saying, you never listen to me, try saying, you know, I really feel like my concerns aren't being heard when we talk. It's a small but really powerful shift that can make all the difference. And if you're struggling to find your assertive voice, try channeling your inner Beyonce. Queen Bey once said, I'm not bossy, I'm the boss. So put on your power suit or your favorite pair of sweats, whatever makes you feel confident, and start asserting yourself like the boss that you are. Remember, developing assertive communication skills takes practice and patience. But with a little bit of effort, you can communicate your needs and feelings in a way that is clear, confident, and respectful. In our next segment, we're going to dig a little deeper into becoming more effective in our relationship communication. Now it's time to tackle one of the biggest challenges in any relationship, understanding your partner's communication style. We all know that men and women communicate differently, but did you know that there are actually four distinct communication styles? That's right. Just like the Ninja Turtles, your partner could be a Donatello, Raphael, Michelangelo, or Leonardo when it comes to communication. So let's break it down. The Donatellos out there tend to be logical, analytical, and they value facts and data above everything else. They want to solve problems and get to the point. Meanwhile, the Raphaels are emotional, passionate, and they value authenticity and sincerity in their communications. They want to connect on a deeper level and be understood. Then we have the Michelangelos, who are the fun-loving, energetic, and love to tell stories and jokes. They want to entertain and bring joy to others through their communication. And last but not least, we have the Leonardos. These guys are the strategic, organized, and like to plan ahead people. They want clear and concise communication that helps them achieve their goals. Now, I don't know about you, but I am definitely a Michelangelo when it comes to communication. I love making people laugh and telling stories, but my ex-boyfriend was definitely a Donatello. He would always shoot down my jokes and want to talk about the facts and figures. It was like trying to get a laugh out of a rock. But once I realized that we had different communication styles, it helped me to adjust my approach and communicate with him in a way that he could understand and appreciate. So if you're struggling to connect with your partner on a communication level, take some time to think about their communication style. Are they a Donatello, a Raphael, a Michelangelo, or a Leonardo? And more importantly, what can you do to adjust your communication style to help meet theirs? Now, I want to get down to the nitty gritty of effective communication in relationships. And let's be real, it's not always easy. But fear not, we have some specific techniques that will have you and your partner communicating like champs in no time. First up, we've got the tried and true method of active listening. Now I know what you're thinking, but Eva, I already know how to listen. But do you really? According to a study by the University of Missouri, the average person listens for only about 17 seconds before interrupting or tuning out. Yikes. So your next time your partner is talking, try and really tune in and focus on what they're saying. Repeat back what you've heard to make sure that you're on the same page. It might seem simple, but it can really make a world of difference. Next up, we've got those I statements that we touched on. You know the ones, I feel this, I need that, etc. Now, I'm not saying you need to start every sentence with I, but using I statements can help you avoid the dreaded blame game. Instead of saying, you never do the dishes. Try, I feel overwhelmed when there are a lot of dishes in the sink. See the difference? It puts the focus on your feelings and your needs rather than making accusations. And finally, one of my personal favorites, avoiding blame. In the wise words of Taylor Swift, we are both to blame. It's important to remember that in any situation, both parties have a role to play. So instead of pointing fingers, try to approach things like a team. For example, instead of, you're always late, say, let's see if we can figure out a way to make sure that we're on time. It takes the pressure off of one person and puts the focus on finding a solution together. Do you know what one of the most important components of communication in romantic relationships is? Empathy. I know what you're thinking. Empathy, shmempathy. What does that even mean? Well, let me break it down for you. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another person. It's like putting yourself in someone else's shoes and seeing things from their perspective. And let me tell you, empathy is like the secret sauce of communication. It can take a really mediocre conversation and turn it into something that's really deep and meaningful. Think about it. Have you ever tried to talk to your partner about something that's bothering you and they just don't seem to get it? 
It's frustrating, right? But then they take a moment to really listen and try and understand where you're coming from, and it can make all the difference. In fact, studies show that couples who practice empathy in their communication are more satisfied in their relationships and experience less conflict. It's not just a warm and fuzzy concept. It's actually backed by science. Let's get real, though. Empathy is something that is easier said than done, and it's not always easy to put our own feelings aside and to really listen to someone else. I remember when my partner and I were going through a tough time. I was feeling really overwhelmed and emotional, and I just couldn't find the words to express myself. But instead of getting frustrated with me, my husband took a deep breath and he said, I can see that you're really upset. Can you tell me a little bit more about what's going on? And just like that, I felt heard and understood. And it was like this weight had just lifted off of my shoulders. That's the power of empathy, folks. Now, I know I threw a lot at you guys in this segment, and it isn't something that you're going to immediately absorb. So if you head on over to the show notes at queenofswordspodcast.com, then you're going to find some really great resources and worksheets that touch on these things and a couple of others so that you can get to work on making those changes. But first, let's go past just communicating with our partners and move into what really happens when we start coming into conflict. We'll talk about some of the basics today and then dig into fair fighting in a couple of weeks. So we've all been there. You say one thing, your partner hears another, and suddenly you're both so frustrated that you're ready to throw in the towel. So what are the most common communication problems that lead to these conflicts? Well, here are a few. One, not listening to your partner. Two, interrupting or talking over your partner. Three, using critical or blaming language and four misunderstandings. First up, we've got the classic case of the assumption game. You know, the one where you assume that your partner should just know what you want or need rather than actually telling them. Remember that saying, assuming makes an ass out of you and me? I had a friend who expected her boyfriend to read her mind and surprise her with a weekend getaway for their anniversary. When he didn't come through, she was livid. But the poor guy had no idea what she was expecting and ended up in the doghouse. Moral of the story, speak up and communicate your needs. Then we have interrupting. You know what we're talking about. You're in the middle of a passionate rant about your day and your partner suddenly cuts you off to talk about something completely unrelated. It's like, hello, I wasn't finished yet. According to a study by the University of California, Irvine, interruptions happen an average of every 12 seconds during a conversation. And in that same study, they found that couples who interrupt each other have a higher likelihood of experiencing negative interactions and feeling overall just less satisfied with their relationship. I'm not immune to this myself. In fact, just this evening, my husband and I had an argument because he interrupted me for something that I thought was so stupid and so off topic. What can I say? I'm still a work in progress. So next time you feel the urge to interrupt, take a deep breath and let your partner finish their thought. Next, we've got being critical and blaming. It's easy to fall into the trap of using accusatory language when you're upset, but it rarely leads to a positive outcome. As the famous American author and lecturer Dale Carnegie once said, any fool can criticize, condemn, and complain, and most fools do. Instead of criticizing your partner, try using those I statements that we talked about earlier to express how their actions make you feel. For example, when you do this, it makes me feel like this. It's also really easy to get caught up in the heat of the moment and start pointing fingers when something goes wrong. Aristotle once said, it's easy to fly into a passion, but to be angry with the right person and to the right degree and at the right time and for the right purpose and in the right way, that's not easy. Let's take a step back from ourselves and say, is it really my partner's fault or am I just projecting my own insecurities onto them? Instead of blaming, focus on finding those solutions and working together as a team. Picture this, you're sitting across from your partner at your favorite restaurant trying to have a romantic evening, but as soon as you start talking, it's like you're speaking two completely different languages. They say one thing, you hear another, before you know it, you're both arguing about something that wasn't even the point in the first place. Does that sound familiar to you? Well, misunderstandings like this are all too common in romantic relationships. They actually account for nearly 68% of all relationship conflict. 
In fact, a study by the University of Chicago found that couples who had poor communication and misunderstanding patterns were more likely to experience conflict and dissatisfaction in their relationship. But it's not all doom and gloom. There are some hilarious examples of misunderstandings that might make you feel a little bit better about your own communication mishaps. For example, one couple that I knew were arguing over what kind of fish to buy at the grocery store. He wanted salmon. She insisted on getting tilapia. After a really heated debate, they realized that they were both actually talking about the same fish. Turns out the man had always called it salmon, and the woman had grown up calling it tilapia. And then there's the classic story of a husband who asked his wife to pass the salt during dinner, only to have her reply, you're a great dad. Turns out she'd been thinking about something entirely different, something he had done earlier that day, and she hadn't been paying any attention to the conversation. But it's not just those everyday misunderstandings that can cause trouble. A study found that 42% of couples admitted to having disagreements because of misunderstandings of tone or intent over text message and email. And we all know that those little emojis can only do so much to convey tone. But here's the thing, folks. Misunderstandings don't have to be the end of the world. In fact, they can be a chance to strengthen your communication skills and to grow as a couple. So the next time you find yourself in a misunderstanding with your partner, take a deep breath, put on your empathy hat, and if you need to, ask them to clarify what they meant. It'll just lead to a deeper understanding of each other, and it brings you closer together. And who knows? Maybe you'll even look back on that little miscommunication, and you'll end up laughing. It's almost time to say goodbye, and I just wanted to let you guys know that I know last week, or last episode, we went a little bit long. Okay, a lot long. Um, and this one's a little bit on the shorter side, um, but we're going to go ahead and try and keep it right around 25, 28 minutes an episode. Um, I think going forward in the future, if I have like a really long episode, I might break it up into two and we'll see how that goes. Now, before we say goodbye, we want to leave you with this final thought. Communication skills aren't something that you're born with. They're, they're something that you learn and you develop over time. So whether you're in a new relationship or in a long-term one, it's important to constantly work on refining those communication skills. To recap, we covered some important communication tips like understanding your partner's communication style, using I statements, active listening, and even the importance of empathy. Communication is a two-way street, so active listening and empathizing with your partner's point of view can really go a long way in avoiding misunderstandings and conflicts. Don't be afraid to be assertive and express your needs and your wants. People don't know what they don't know. And your partner's not a mind reader. Lastly, when it comes to resolving conflicts, focus on finding solutions that work for both you and your partner as a team. Compromise is king. And if you're ready to take your communication skills to the next level, you can go ahead and head on over to our show notes on the website and download the free worksheets that we have. They're going to give you a lot of the tools that you need to start practicing effective communication with your partner right away. On our next episode in two weeks, we'll be back with an episode dedicated to all things long distance. We're going to tackle the challenges, the benefits, and everything in between that comes from loving somebody from afar. We're going to talk about some experiences and, of course, give you some tips and tricks that will help you make your long distance relationship thrive. Mark your calendars, set a reminder, and we'll see you then. Well, folks, that's a wrap on another episode of Queen of Swords. We hope you enjoyed the ride and that you're feeling a bit more empowered and a little bit less confused about the wild world of dating and relationships. Remember, when it comes to love, there are no easy answers, but with a little bit of humor, a lot of self-care, and a trusty sword by your side, you can handle anything the heart throws your way. So until next time, keep your sword sharp, your heart open, and your standards high. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review us on your favorite podcasting platform. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon. Music